this session, we will cover the next few steps of the accounting cycle. We will post information from the general journal to the general ledger and create a trial balance. In this picture, you see how analyzing transactions in the general journal fit into the accounting cycle. In this session, we're going to spend some time learning about the general ledger and the trial balance. To begin, we're going to talk about the chart of accounts. A chart of accounts is a list of all the accounts a company uses in its accounting system. The accounts are listed in numerical order, and the first number in the numbering system for the accounts is an industry standard. Assets always start with one. Liabilities start with the number two. Equity accounts like capital and withdrawals, start with the number three. Revenues, start with the number four. And expenses, start with the number five or the number six. The rest of the numbers are unique to the company. A company may have an equipment account, and if they were to number an equipment account, it would have to start with the number one because the number one indicates that the equipment is an asset. The numbers after that are up to the company. So you could have a 301, meaning that's an asset, and 30, again, would be unique to the company. If you recall from earlier sessions, the general journal is where we record all of the company's transaction by date. It does not give us all of the information we need to manage a company, so we have to have another place where we put financial information. Now, that other place is called the general ledger. The general ledger allows us to sort all of the journal entries by account. It's a place where we go to get information about about a certain account, like how much cash is in the bank account, or how much do we pay our employees so far this year. When we talk about the accounts in a company's accounting system, most accounts will have normal balances. And a normal balance is whatever makes the account go up. So if you'll remember wax and clear, we wax up debit and we clear up credit. They give us the rules for debits and credits, but they also tell us what is normal for that particular account. So if you look at any asset account, when you look at the balance in the general ledger, the balance should be a debit balance. The posting process is the process we're going to use to transfer the information from the general journal to the general ledger. Posting isn't difficult, but it will take some practice to remember the steps. And basically, there are six steps to the posting process. When we post, we always start at the beginning of the general journal and work our way down the page. So we're going to start with the first journal entry and the very first account in that journal entry. So we're going to start with this cash account. So we're going to look at all of the headings in the general ledger until we find cash. The numbering system can help us find the account in the general ledger because of the numbers. We know that cash is an asset, therefore assets have to start with the number one. So all of the accounts in the general ledger are numbered. A large company can have more than 10,000 accounts, so it's really, really important that you understand um, the numbering system for companies. Once you find the account in the general ledger, we're going to transfer the information from the general journal to the general ledger. We're going to get rid of these markings. So the first thing that we transfer is the date. So we're going to take the date from our journal entry and transfer that down to our general ledger. January 1st. There's nothing that gets written in the explanation column for the general ledger because the explanation is already written in the general journal and we don't want to have to repeat it. The next column is the PR column and the PR stands for posting reference. And what we're doing here is indicating where we're getting the number from. So when we look up in our general journal, we notice that there's a page number on every page in the general journal. So what we do is write a G for the fact that the number is coming from the general journal and page number one to indicate what page it was on. Then we're going to take the amount, and the amount is in the debit column, so we're going to transfer that $5,000 down in our debit column in the general ledger. Then we're going to calculate the balance of the account, and remember that the balance of the account is really important. We need to know how much cash is in our bank account at all times. We don't want to spend money that we don't have, so we need to know how much is in there. So it's a $5,000 balance. Now the last thing we do in the general ledger is to calculate the balance of the account, and and calculating the balance of the account is just like we did when we were working with T-Account. In fact, when you think about a T-Account, this is where the idea of a T came from. It came from the general ledger. So what we do when we calculate the balance of an account is take the debits, subtract them from the credits to get the balance of the account. So we have a debit and no credit. So the balance of the account is 5000 And we also need to know if it's a debit balance or a credit balance. There are no credits, so this is a debit balance. So at the side, I like to write whether or not that's a debit balance or a credit balance. just helps us in the next stage of the accounting cycle. 
the last part of the posting process is when we take the account number and we put it back up in the post reference column in the general journal. So we're going to put a 101 here in the post reference column in their general journal. When there is a number entered in the PR column in the general journal, you'll know that that number has been posted. This is really helpful when you're interrupted in the middle of a question. It will tell you exactly where you left off. So if there's a number in the column, you know it's been transferred to the general ledger. If there's no number in the column, you know it hasn't been done and it still has to be posted. Let's go through the posting process again with the rest of the journal entries that are listed here in our general journal. The next account in our journal entry is the capital account. Now we know from the numbering system that equity accounts start with a three. So we're going to scroll down and we are going to find the capital account and it's going to start with a number three. So there it is, capital. The date we're going to write down as January the 1st. Remember there's no explanation. The post reference is the numbers coming from general ledger page one and the amount is $5,000 and it's in the credit column. So we're going to write that $5,000 in the credit column. Then we have to calculate the balance of the account and the balance of the account is 5000 and it's a credit balance because the credits are bigger than the debit. We're going to go back up to our general journal and we're going to write 310 in the post reference column to indicate that that $5,000 credit was posted to the general ledger. And we're going to go down to our next journal entry. The first account in our journal entry is accounts receivable and it's a debit of $10,000. Accounts receivable is an asset account, so we're going to go down and we're going to look for an account that starts with a 1, and there it is, accounts receivable. We're going to put the date, and the date is January the 12th. Remember, nothing in the explanation column. The post reference column is G1, and we're going to put the $10,000 in the debit column. The balance of the account is also $10,000, and it's a debit balance because there were no credit. Then we're going to take this account number, 110, and we're going to put it up in the post reference column in our general journal. The next account in this journal entry is fees earned and fees earned is a revenue account and we know that revenue accounts start with the number four. So we're going to scroll down in our general ledger until we come to an account with a 400 number and there it is, fees earned. So on the date we're going to write January the 1st, nothing goes in the explanation column, G1 goes in the post reference and that $10,000 goes in the credit column. The balance of the account is $10,000 and it's a credit balance. The account number is 410. So we're going to go back up to our general journal and write 410 in the post reference column. So we're going to go down to the next journal entry, January 20th, wage expense is our first account. So we're going to scroll through our general ledger until we come to the accounts that start with fives or sixes. So there's a five, rent expense, and then we have wage expense. So the date is January the 20th, no explanation. In the post reference column, we're going to write G1. The amount was $10,000, and it goes in the credit column. The balance of the account is $10,000. Remember, the balance of the account shows us how much we paid for wages so far this year. We're going to scroll back up to our general journal to put the account number 530 in the post reference column. Cash is the first account, so we're going to write the date, January 20th. No explanation. G1 goes in the post reference column. The $2,700 goes in the credit column. When I go to calculate the balance of the account, remember our T account. When we calculate the balance of the account, when we have debits and credits, we take the difference between the two numbers. When we do that, it works out to be $2,300. I have to determine whether or not that balance is a debit or a credit, and I do that by looking at the balance that it was before this transaction. It was a debit, and then we have a credit of 2700 Which one's bigger? The debits were bigger, so this is the debit balance of the account still. I'm going to go back up to my general journal and put 101 in the post reference column. The last transaction is for rent expense. So we're going to go down and find rent expense in our general ledger. 
remember it's going to start with a five because it's an expense account. There's the rent expense. The date was January 26. No explanation. Post reference is general ledger, page one. The amount was a debit of $800. So we're going to put $800 in the debit column. We're going to calculate the balance of the account. The balance is $800. The balance is a debit balance. We're going to go back up to our general journal and put the account number 520 rate by rent expense. Now the last one is a credit to cash. So we're going to go down in our general ledger and find the cash account. And you'll notice I ran out of room, so I'm just going to add it right to the bottom. The $800 goes in the credit column. So now I have a debit balance of $2,300, and I just paid $800 for rent. So one's a debit, one's a credit. I take the difference between the two, and I'm going to get $1,500. That becomes the new balance of the bank account. That balance is a debit balance because the debit was bigger than the credit. I'm going to go back up to my general journal and put 101 in the post reference column. When we look at our general journal, you'll notice that Every journal entry has a post reference by it, so we know that all of those numbers have been posted to the general ledger. When we look at the general ledger, remember we've now organized all of those transactions by account. So when we look at the cash account, you can see that we have $1,500 in our bank account. When we look at accounts receivable, you can see that there was equipment purchased and we paid $10,000 for it. There's nothing in our equipment account. There's nothing in our accounts payable account, so we don't owe anybody any money. We have capital of $10,000. We have capital of $5,000. Fees earned, we have $10,000 in there. That means that we've earned $10,000 so far. We've paid $800 for rent, and we've paid $10,000 for wages. After we've completed all of our posting, the next part in the accounting cycle is to prepare a trial balance. A trial balance is prepared on a form that looks something like this. And it's just a list of all of the accounts that a company uses in its general ledger and the related balances for that particular account. The information in the trial balance comes from the general ledger, and it's prepared to check to see if the debits equal the credits. And it's also used to prepare financial statements. So what I'm going to do is have a look at our general ledger, and we're going to start at the very beginning of our general ledger with our cash account. When you prepare a trial balance, the account should be listed on the trial balance in numerical order. So we're going to start with cash, I'm being our first account, and we're going to put account number 101 at the very top. We're going to list the name of the account, cash. And we're going to put the final total of the cash account. So that is the $1,500 debit we're going to put in the debit column. Then we're going to go down to accounts receivable. It's account number 110. And we're going to put that $10,000 debit in the debit column. And we're going to move up the general ledger so we can see the next couple of accounts. And you can see that we have an equipment account. It doesn't have a balance, so you don't have to list it on the trial balance. Then comes accounts payable. Again, there's no balance in that account, so it doesn't have to go on the trial balance. We keep going up, we've got a capital account, and that capital account does have a balance in it, so we're going to put account number 310, we're going to write Carol Finley Capital, and we're going to write that $5,000 in the credit column. The next account is account number 410, and it's called Fees Earned, and the balance of the account is $10,000 and it's a credit, so we're going to put it in the credit column in our trial balance. And we have a couple more accounts in our general ledger. Rent expense is account number 520, and the amount is a debit of $800. The last account is account number 530. Account name is wage expense, and the amount is a credit of $10,000. So now we have all of the accounts in the general ledger listed with their appropriate balances. The last thing we do with our trial balance is take the debit column and add it up and take the credit column and add it up. So we need totals for those two columns. When we add up the debit column, we get 12300 And when we add up the credit column, we get 25000 When you compare those two numbers, they should be exactly the same. The debit column has to equal the credit column. 
And when it doesn't, it means that we've made a mistake somewhere. Some of you may have seen me make a mistake when I was posting to the general ledger. And I did this on purpose to demonstrate the process you go through to find a mistake in a trial ballot. It's really easy to make mistakes in the posting process and really time consuming to fix the mistake and find the mistake. So be really, really careful when you're going through the posting process and preparing the trial ballot. When you do make a mistake though, you have to find it. In order to find it, we're going to work backwards from the trial balance to the general ledger to the general journal. The first thing we're going to do is re-add the numbers on the trial balance. So we're going to add up the debit column again and the credit column again to see if we've made a mistake in the totals. And when you do that, you'll see that I haven't made a mistake when I calculated the $12,300 or the $25,000. The second thing that we're going to do is make sure that we copy down the numbers correctly. It's really easy when you're copying numbers from the general ledger to the trial balance to leave off a zero or to transpose numbers. What I mean by transposing numbers is instead of writing 1500, you may have written 5100. So those are two really common mistakes. I'm just going to erase that out. And we're going to have a look to make sure I didn't write any numbers down wrong. We'll start with wage expense. It's a credit balance of $10,000 and that's what I wrote on the trial balance. The rent expense, $800, and it's a debit, that's what I wrote on the trial balance. We come down to fees earned, and it's a $10,000 credit, that one's okay. Carol Finley's a $5,000 credit, that one's okay. Then we've got accounts receivable of $10,000, and that's a debit, and that one's okay. And then we have our cash account with a $1,500 debit, and that one was written down fine. The next thing I'm going to do is check to see if all of the accounts on the trial balance have normal balances. And remember, wax and clear will help us remember this step. All of my asset accounts should be in the debit column, and they are. Withdrawal account, we don't have one. Expense accounts should be in the debit column. And one is and one isn't. So I'm going to have a look at this wage expense account again. It doesn't appear as a normal balance. I'm going to go in my general ledger. I'm going to find that wage account. There doesn't look to be any errors in it. So I'm going to go back to this journal entry, January 20th, G1. And I'm going to find out if I've taken that $10,000 and put it in the right place. There's the wage expense account. I shouldn't have taken the $10,000 credit. I should have written it down as $2,700. I'm going to go back to my general ledger and I'm going to fix up that wage account. The amount should be a debit $2,700. So the number on my trial balance shouldn't be $10,000 in the credit column. It should be $2,700 in the debit column. When I change a number on my trial balance, it's going to change the totals. I'm going to recalculate debit column and credit column total, $1,500 10,800 and 2,700 to be 15,000. And then I'm going to add up the credit column, and I've got 5,000, 10,000, 15,000. So now my debit column and my credit column balance. I'm going to put double underlines under both of them to indicate that they balance. In the suggested solutions, you'll also see dollar signs at the top and at the bottom of each of the columns. You can put them in or not. It's up to you. 